on today's episode of things that sound so absurd you'll wonder if it's an onion article i present you with the newest threat to biodiversity cats no not the cinematic masterpiece but your furry feline friends who are eating birds like it's their day job how many birds exactly well 1.4 to as many as 3.7 billion birds a year. And that's in the United States alone. And I know they're just so adorable, but they're also like so bred to be killers. <laughs> that's just written in their DNA. Cat said, better luck next time, honey. I'm a mean, lean, killing machine. So what? How exactly did we get here? And what can we do? First things first, how did we end up domesticating cats in the first place? About 12,000 years ago, people started living with cats. And although we think we've got them on a leash, see what I did, got them on a leash, see what I did there. The domestic cat and the wild cat are strangely similar even today. Do people keep cats on leashes? Maybe you should, maybe we should consider this considering they're eating so many birds. <laughs> Anyways, humans and cats have shared a mostly symbiotic or mutual relationship for thousands of years, but that doesn't mean that cats have changed in the process. Dogs were more helpful when humans were hunters. Cats weren't really a part of the picture until humans began settling down and doing things like farming. Once that started, cats were like walking mousetraps. The OG mousetrap, if you will. <laughs> In a way, cats sort of domesticated themselves. You know, they started hanging out, they saw an opportunity, and they seized it. Think tiny furry businessmen, like Puss in Boots minus a fedora. Historically, Egyptians were big cat people, the Romans were really into cats, as well as lots of the Far East. During the 15th and 16th century, cats were actually brought on to the cargo ships to help control vermin and disease while they were at sea. So now fast forward to the 20th century when innovations like refrigeration, kitty litter, neutering and spraying were made. Until this point, keeping cats indoors 24 hours a day was not possible and really not even a goal at all. Today, it is very possible and very common. Um, this is what we would call an indoor cat or a house cat, but biologically these cats are very much the same as they were when they weren't indoor cats. So their role may have changed, read walking mouse trap turned cuddle buddy, but their basic behavior, physiology, and needs have not. In contrast, dogs have changed a lot physically since domestication and evolved to survive on an omnivorous diet. Dogs and wolves, for example, are very different. Dogs are smaller with shorter muzzles and smaller teeth. Cats haven't changed that much at all. Cats still require the same high protein diet and the outdoor survival skills they have to satisfy these needs still remain like climbing to high vantage points to be able to scope out an area for prey. Obviously this is no longer necessary, but this intuitive need could explain why your cat likes to go up onto the bookcase to view the living room. Cats used to survive by hunting small prey, and where is small prey usually found? Well, in small places. Hence why cats like to reach into small areas and openings and containers. And they're not ruining your furniture just for fun. Scratching used to be a way to sharpen their claws and stretch their back and their leg muscles. So while young kittens, if brought into human contact early enough in life, can be fully socialized to be around humans and even integrated into indoor life, many cats are still outside, living their outdoor life with or without human contact. Kitty don't quitty. Okay, so now we know where cats came into the picture, but what is biodiversity and why is it important? Biodiversity is the concept that all living things are better the more variety there is, and that maintaining this variety is very crucial. And the stability and longevity of our planet relies on biodiversity. So every endangered species that leads to another species becoming extinct chips away at this. Biodiversity is not only vital to the physical well-being of our planet, but it actually has a huge impact economically too. Food, commercial forestry, and ecotourism industries could lose up to 338 billion US dollars a year if biodiversity continues decreasing at its current rate. Cats have contributed to the extinction of 63 species of birds, mammals, and reptiles. And like you have to imagine the sort of advantage it gives cats to get this special treatment from humans. It's like 
owning a small lion, but the lion has access to vets, gourmet food, a bed of its own, all at its beck and call. That lion's gonna get pretty strong. <laughs> it's gonna eat more gazelle than it would without those things. So the easiest way to reduce your cat's harm on biodiversity, keep it inside. It's as simple as that. The more time your cat spends inside, the less time it spends outside eating birds. Oh my God, case closed. Which reminds me, stay inside, stay home, binge watch Postable, and practice social distancing. Mutual care is thinking we instead of me, and COVID-19 is no joking matter. Even if cats eating birds is a little bit, is a little bit of a joking matter, slightly. I hope you and your cat enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time. Bye.